you're listening to the Telltale channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. In this podcast, we're going to talk about Pastor Hank Koneman slowly turning Trump into a religious figure. Political candidate Rachel Hamm. Apparently, she believes she's empathically divined how her voting district feels. Greg Locke's belief that he can cure mental conditions like bipolar disorder and autism. We also take voicemails. If you want to leave a voicemail, the number is 1-800-701-8573. If you want to send an email instead, the email address is telltalemailbag at gmail.com. All this stuff will be in the description also, if you're curious. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Yeah, hey, uh, Owen, uh, this is Sarah from Mass. Uh, you should go to congress.gov uh, and read the bill itself, HR 6666. Okay, so I talked about somebody named Clay Clark last week, or a couple weeks ago, anyway. Clay Clark is the organizer of the Reawaken America tour, and he made some bizarre unhinged claims about the bill HR 6666, okay? So what I did was I listened to his claims, and I went to a Reuters fact check article and read the fact checks. He just flat out lied about the bill. It wasn't true, what he said. Uh, It was incorrect information. It was misinformation. I don't know if he was intentionally lying or, or what, but what he said was wrong, according to the article. So what this guy is telling me here is that I should just go straight to congress.gov and read the bill myself, right? So HR 6666, um, Reuters is lying. Reuters is lying. Okay, tall claim. And all the social media and all the media lies. I mean, you can go directly to the source. You've been fooled. I understand that. But um, maybe, I, I don't know if you're one of these that's hiding the truth deliberately or you just don't know. But we're going to find out, aren't we? But we're going to find out, aren't we? Interesting. Okay. Don't know if I'm one of those that's deliberately hiding the truth or not, but we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do it. Let's go to congress.gov and let's type in HR space 6666 what were clay clark's claims about this bill again let me look this up yeah this is a a a short clip let's just listen to what clay clark said bill hr 6666 was trying to accomplish one more time just get a little bit of a refresher here what do people need to understand in your estimation What we need to understand is that Congress is working on legislation called H.R. 6666. It's H.R. and then four sixes. That legislation, if that were passed, would uh, make every single person on the planet, or at least in America, to take an RNA-modifying nanotechnology inside your body that has the capacity to control your thoughts. Okay. Everybody out there needs to make sure that all of your elected officials need to know, do not let H.R. Okay, well, it sounds like that was the claim. It sounds like, just for good measure, let's listen to that one more time would make every single person on the planet, or at least in America, to take an RNA-modifying nanotechnology inside your body that has the capacity to control your thoughts. Okay, so he's saying, basically, in layman's terms, H.R. 6666 is going to force people to get vaccinated. That's basically what he's saying, right? He's got all kinds of weird, unhinged, incorrect beliefs about the vaccine, but we'll, we'll hit that in a minute. The point is, forced vaccination is what it's supposed to be, right? So... We're here, congress.gov. I'm looking it up here. There are two different sets of Congress, 117 and 116. This is 2019 to 2020 and 2021 to 2022. Let's check both. This is the one that he's talking about right here, the 116th Congress, H.R. 6666, and it's called the Trace Act, and it was put through by Representative Bobby Rush. So this was from the previous term. 2019 to 2020, and it says exactly what Reuters said that it did. Hit the summary. This bill authorizes the CDC to award grants for testing, contact tracing, monitoring, and other activities to address COVID-19. Entities such as federally qualified health centers, nonprofit organizations, and certain hospitals and schools are eligible to receive such grants. So it's just awarding grants to health entities like hospitals or whatever so that they can afford to do testing and contact tracing and monitoring and things like that. That's it. 
That's all it is. But for good measure, let's just go back because there, like I said, there was a second bill, HR 6666, from the 117th Congress, 2021 to 2022. And this one isn't even, it doesn't even have a summary yet. But let's just look at the text. It's brand new. To amend the Higher Education Act of 1965 to improve the financial aid process for homeless and foster care youth. Miss Clark of Massachusetts for herself and Mr. Young introduced the following bill, which was referred to the Committee of Education and Labor. To amend the Higher Education Act of 1965 to improve the financial aid process for homeless and foster care youth. This act may be cited as Higher Education Access and Success for Homeless and Foster Youth Act of 2022. Well, what Clay Clark said, basically, is that Bill HR 6666 was going to force you to be vaccinated. The bill doesn't say anything about that. I understand I didn't read the entire thing just now on stream, but it doesn't. It doesn't say anything about that. You can go there yourself and read it. It's right here, congress.gov. It doesn't say there's anything about, look, we've already moved to another bill. It doesn't say there's anything about forced vaccinations. I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm lying, I'm trying to trick people, what? I don't know. It's nonsense. It's complete nonsense. Sorry, man. I went there, I read the bill, I looked through it, I looked at the summary. Reuters was correct the first time. Hey, my name is Cage. I'm from STL, Missouri, and I am curious um, what your opinion on and what your outlook on is on Satanists, people particularly who partake in the Satanic Temple, not church. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything through your videos where you talk about Satanists at all. Um, and I was just curious, and I was also curious if... All right, well, let me take them to uh, one question at a time. First, to talk about the Satanist stuff. Uh, you said, how do I feel about the Satanic Temple rather than the Church of Satan? I think they're both good, generally. I think they exist as a pushback against religious control over politics and things like that. Um, and I, I, you know, I think that's good. I'm not a Satanist. I, even a non-theistic one, I'm just, you know, I don't get into it. But anything that helps weaken the strangleholds that Christian nationalism has on our political system today, I'm all for. So, 100%. And yeah, I know there is a difference between the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan, and I know they get a little touchy about the difference. So make sure you don't mix them up, is the point. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you drawing the distinction there for me. Yeah, I think they're both valuable in the role that they play. Now, as for the second question you had for me. And I was also curious if, uh, if you are a Tool fan. I think I went on your account once and I saw through your playlist you had some Tool songs saved, which is rad. I'm a huge fan myself, and I'm kind of curious what your favorite song is as well. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, I appreciate that. I do have some playlists on YouTube. One of the playlists I have listed as public is a Tool playlist. I'm a massive Tool fan. Love Tool to death. One of my favorite bands of all time. In fact, I'd say it is my favorite band of all time. I would say my favorite song right now is probably Descending or Fear Inoculum from the newer album. I'm actually a big fan of the new album, honestly. I, I thought it was great. I also really like Right Into Lateralis. I loved Anima, the old album from 1996, I think, 97. Fantastic album. Push It, Eulogy, Stink Fist. I mean, they were all great. I loved all of them. Just Tool is one of the greatest bands of all time. However, that being said, I did a video a while back about Tool being a little bit too wooey for me, though they're still my favorite band ever. They're, still, they're also very wooey. And oh my God, you would think that I murdered somebody's kid right in front of them. Uh, they did not like that. The audience really got upset and said that I'm just I not smart enough to understand and blah, blah, you know, all this, all that stuff. I do love Tool to death, though. Really, I love Tool. They're one of the best bands ever. Hi, I'm Matthew from Colorado. My question is, what's the opposite of a cult? If a cult is a group of people who uncritically adhere to a personal ideology. The definition you just gave, a group of people who uncritically adhere to a person or ideology, I don't accept that definition of cult, but we'll continue and then I'll, I'll come back. Name for some people who 
hate who unquickly hate people a personal ideology. For example, people who hate vegans or communism without actually knowing anything about them. Thank you. My definition of cult is a little bit different. The definition that I go with involves what level of control the group has over its members. Does it control them emotionally? Does it try to discourage them from being friends with outsiders or people who are critical of the religion or group? Do they discourage getting information from outside sources? Do they try to control behavior through a system of rewards and punishments? Things like that. That's what I use to determine if something is a cult or not. Now, as far as groups that uncritically hate certain things like veganism or uh, what, what was the other thing you said? Uh, veganism or communism, I think. Uncritically hating something doesn't necessarily make it a cult. It could be cult-like behavior, but if you're part of a group that has a tenant that is uncritically hate this thing, that could be part of a broader good versus evil, us versus them mentality. It could be part of thought-stopping techniques, intentionally trying to prevent you from looking into certain things even further. It, it, a lot of this could route back to cult-like behavior, cult-like mentality, and it could be part of a cult. Uh, I don't think that hating communism in and of itself means that you're in a cult necessarily, or just plain hating veganism. I don't think it necessarily means you're part of an anti-vegan cult. But I, you know, I do think that there are vegan cults out there, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. And there are also anti-vegan cults out there too. Not to say that all vegans are in a cult, or all anti-vegans are. That is not the case. But they do exist out there. Uh, I've, you know, I've seen it myself. Anyway, that's my take on it. Hopefully it sheds some light. Hey, I'm from California. I was just curious. In one of your videos, you mentioned that the reason you were disfellowshipped, or one of the main reasons you were disfellowshipped, is because you smoked a cigarette. I was just wondering, why is it such a big sin in the Jehovah's Witness religion to smoke a cigarette? Anyway, I really like your show. Thanks. Bye. What it really comes down to is that you stepped outside of the boundaries that the religion set up. You stepped outside of what they expect you to do, how they expect you to act as a human being. They spend a disproportionate amount of time trying to turn you into a clone. You have to work for a minimum of a year to get baptized, at least a year. If you walk into the religion totally green, know nothing about it, it will take you at least a year to get baptized as one. I've seen people get baptized within six months of starting if they were born into it, if they were members kind of before that. I've seen that. But they spend all that time, a year or more, trying to turn you into a clone. They want you to be a perfect clone of every other Jehovah's Witness out there, right down to the way that you walk and talk. That's why when you hear things like Stephen Lett and the way that he talks, the spread of this disease is distressing, to be sure. But we're really not uh, surprised to see the world in the grip of such pestilence, are we? This cadence that you're seeing here, that you're listening to, the way that he talks, but we're really not surprised to see the grip of this pestilence, are we? That cadence, I'm trying to exaggerate it so that you can pick up on it. Every Jehovah's Witness speaker, like every person that stands up on the podium, has that cadence to some degree. Maybe not as pronounced as Stephen Lett here, governing body member of Jehovah's Witnesses, but they all have some form of that cadence. You can, you can hear it in all of their voices to some degree. What an experience. That's why loyalty to Jehovah has been so important. That is so true, Brother Brown. How about you? Has your loyalty ever been tested? What is on your mind? I can't believe the nerve that Ben has. Ben? Yeah, Ben. He gave me counsel about that talk that I gave last week. There's no doubt that we're living in critical times hard to deal with. Just as the Apostle Paul prophesied, 
under inspiration in 2 Timothy chapter 3. They all have it to some degree, and that is a pretty good example of them trying to create clones. They're trying to create a cloned personality so that you're just like everybody else. That's what they want in an ideal world. When you step outside the bounds of what they expect you to do or how they expect you to act, they don't want that to infect everybody else. They don't want individuality. They are fighting that tooth and nail. They'll do anything to prevent that from happening, up to and including excising you from your own friends and family, cut you out completely, not allowed to talk to you ever again, because you're not one of us. You're, you're one of the world. You're not one of the clones. That's why it was such a big deal to smoke a cigarette, because you're not part of the belief system, you're not part of the cloned personality anymore, and you have no right to be near any of us, pretty much. They call it a mental disease when you leave the religion. Next, we're going to talk about Pastor Hank Kuhneman slowly turning Trump into a religious figure. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. This is Hank Kuhneman. If you're unfamiliar, let me reintroduce you to him to give you an idea of some of the things that he believes. He was one of Trump's biggest super fans all through his entire presidency. And right before the 2020 election, he's one of the people who prophesied, not predicted, but prophesied that Donald Trump was going to be the next president and seemed to believe that he had God's mandate, that he was one of God's special people that God had anointed him and he was going to play a special role in the plan and the whole nine yards. Well, obviously, after that fell flat, he had to back up. He had to find some way to explain why he was so wrong. So let's take a look at this clip. This is early April 2021, shortly after inauguration, just a few months. I wanted to see what he had to say for himself after he had had some time to stew on the fact that he was wrong, unequivocally, unquestionably wrong. Give this a listen, early April 2021. Remember, President Trump won the election. And so for people to say, well, people prophesied that he'd win, he did win. And so we had a stolen election. No, we didn't. Simple as that. I know that you feel like it was a stolen election, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's fine. If you feel that way, you need to bring us evidence. There is no evidence that the election was stolen from Donald Trump. Until you give us evidence, you're just a flat out liar. Simple as that. You claimed that God gave you a prophecy that Donald Trump is going to win. And you lied. The Bible specifically describes people like you. People who prophesy things that don't come true. So we had a stolen election. And so the month of March has had a lot to celebrate. We've, you know, President Trump is not going anywhere. He's launched a media website uh, that you can go to. Uh, this was right after Trump launched his blog. It was basically what it was. He was kind of selling it as like a social media network, but he hadn't quite started Truth Social yet. This was when he was just writing stuff on his own website. Like, nobody else could tweet there or anything. It was just they could go there and read what he had to say. That was it. A website uh, that you can go to and uh, begin to receive information. He's, re He's framing this website that Donald Trump started to begin to receive information, he's framing it like he's beginning to receive information from God or from the Bible or something. That's how it's being framed. Because, no joke, Hank Kuhneman really has worked Trump into his theology. I don't say that about every single right-wing church out there because they're not all doing this. Hank Kuhneman specifically, among a few others... I'm gonna give you a name of somebody. You come back and give me one name or, or one uh, descriptive word. Trump. Don't take this wrong, but remember I'm Jewish, and a Messiah is, in Judaism, is a person who would bring the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the world. A Messiah means a great leader, a great prophet. I believe that Donald J. Trump is a Messiah for what's called the New Jerusalem, which is the United States of America. He was it, and he opened everybody's eyes.
that's the only way I can describe him. He's a oh. prophecy fulfilled. Hank Kuhneman specifically, among a few others, have made Trump into a religious figure in their belief system now. Listen, if you don't like President Trump, that's your problem because he's not done talking. You know, he's getting up there in years. He is just about done talking. Um, I don't wish death on anybody. Anybody. Nobody. Period. But Trump is getting up there in years, and he only has so much longer to go before he can't be in the political scene anymore. So he's going to have to pull some real tricks out of the hat soon because he doesn't have much longer. And God's not done with him. And so that's, that's extremely important. There are some things that have to play out because uh, we don't realize how really dark this, this country has been and, and the direction that you know, the enemy and, and those that cooperate with them would love to take this country. I mean, that's us. He's referring to us. He he seems to think that we have, like, dark things in mind for the country, some nefarious thing that we want to turn it into this evil place that nobody wants to live. And and those that cooperate has been and, and the direction that, you know, the enemy and, and those that cooperate with them would love to take this country. So there's been a lot of signs in the month of March alone that are pointing to what I said. There's, a, there's an end result. There's a promise. There's a destination that God is trying to get us to, to, to understand. And it has to do with not man's timing. It has to do with the Lord's timing. And they say, well, Hank, do you know the date? No, but we can know times and seasons. Uh, what does that even mean? We can know times and seasons. I don't understand. What are you getting at here? And so I will say it this way. I'm sensing very strongly by the signs that God is giving that we're going to review that we are close to justice and righteousness being established. What does any of that even mean? I, I don't, it's like he's speaking in cryptic words. He's trying to excuse away his missteps, his false prophecies, by using cryptic language that doesn't make sense to anybody. It's bizarre. This next clip came out not much longer after that one. This was mid-May 21. Since he made the false prophecy, since Biden was inaugurated, he's been spending a lot of time trying to repair his reputation and trying to explain why he gave false prophecy. I mean, there, there really is no excuse for this, but he's trying to explain it anyways. Let's watch this clip of him trying to explain his failed prophecy once again, mid-May 2021. Somebody had released recently about how there were some uh, prophetic ministers that uh, supposedly had a dream that uh, the, the B guy... The B guy? Why call him the B guy? Why not just say Biden? I have to imagine that he's saying the B guy instead of just saying Biden because there are laws about there's the Johnson Amendment and IRS tax code. If you explicitly endorse or oppose specific candidates, you can lose tax exempt status. You can lose tax exempt status like the IRS isn't even prosecuting for that right now. So there there are a ton of churches out there that have explicitly denounced Biden, for example, saying, let's go Brandon in their church is an explicit, specific condemnation and opposition of a political candidate that should get tax exempt status yanked. Jack Hibbs, megachurch pastor, he held a full blown campaign event for Larry Elder in California in his megachurch, picked up campaign donations for him at the end of the church service. You know, today everybody's talking about Antifa and Critical race theory and BLM. I've seen churches now, instead of putting the gospel on the marquee of the church, that church now says Black Lives Matter. But they got the acronym wrong. BLM. It really means because Larry matters. <laughs> La ladies and gentlemen, welcome Larry Elder this morning. There are a billion examples of these churches holding campaign events, not just endorsing them by name, but holding campaign events for these politicians and not facing consequences for it. The IRS just is not coming after people for it. So I really don't know why he's even bothering with this whole the B guy thing. Like, why bother? We know who you're talking about. Does he want us to think he's talking about the B movie? What? I don't get it. The, the B guy 
uh, would win and 45 would lose. And Like, you can call him 45 and you can call him the B-guy. It doesn't mean we don't know who you're talking about. Your audience knows and we know too. Why bother? Just come out and say it. It's not saving you from anything. Let's listen to the, this whole sentence in context one more time. Somebody had released recently about how there were some uh, prophetic ministers that uh, supposedly had a dream that uh, the, the B-guy uh, would win and 45 would lose, and they are accurate prophets. No. That's an interesting point. Um, people are pointing out the prophets, quote-unquote, that predicted or prophesied that Biden would win were correct because Biden was inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States. How do you get around that? You can't just say, well, no. No. You have to give us a little more than that. No, they aren't because he won. <laughs> you need evidence to make that claim. He simply didn't. There is no evidence that Trump won the election. So you, you can call it whatever you want and that they had the skinny beforehand, but the truth of the matter is he won. People who think that this election fraud is going to go away and that President Trump is going to go away, you don't understand that part of the visitation, this isn't worship, this isn't nationalism, this isn't an idolatry, it is God's agenda and desire to use a man and an administration as part of his visitation to bless the church, to give the church religious liberties and freedoms for the... Did you catch what he just said? This isn't idolatry, this isn't putting faith in a man, this is Trump is part of our religion. We aren't like idolizing a man. We are effectively worshiping a, in our religion. Like this is worship. We aren't endorsing a candidate when we say Donald Trump is great and blah, blah, blah. We are worshiping in church. That's what he's saying here. This isn't nationalism. This isn't an idolatry. It is God's agenda. It's God's agenda. He believes that Trump is part of God's plan. Trump being president is eventually going to lead to the rapture or something like that. Seriously. This is a cult. I mean, we've known that for a long time. It's taken on religious undertones. Hell, religious overtones at this point. Look at this. People are standing up and clapping for what he's saying here. For the greatest harvest. Are you listening? But we got people like the disciples that are saying, oh, it's a ghost. It's evil. Oh, 46-1. No, 46 doesn't exist. God doesn't reward and bless a thief. You have to prove that there was theft before you can even make that claim. Right now, you're acting like a false prophet. You give us evidence that your prophecy actually did come true. I'll examine it, and then I'll, I'll believe that Trump actually did win. Not that you're a prophet, you're not, but I'll believe that Trump won if you give me evidence that I can examine. The next clip I wanted to look at, this is from the same time frame, mid-May 2021. He basically went on this tour trying to, re uh, trying to rehabilitate his image after making all these false claims. How does he rehabilitate his reputation? By making more false claims, of course. Dude will not give up. Listen to this one, mid-May 2021. There's been a lot of you know, signing of petitions and accountability they're calling for for the prophets. I have no problem with the statement of accountability in the prophetic. I have no, uh, no problem with the statement to identify prophets and what they are and false prophets. So he's saying, I have no problem with the idea prophets can be held accountable. If they lie about something or if they get a prophecy wrong, he says, I'm okay with them being held accountable for lying or getting that thing wrong. Okay, so now he's about to hedge and tell us what the but is at the end of that sentence. What I have a problem with is their statement or their stance. A, a, a lot of times people, they're standing, um, it's amazing, nobody wrote a letter and thanked me uh, for all the years that I prophesied the other presidents and, all, all, and, and even President Trump. And Okay, guessing? is not the same as prophesying. They're two very different things. You didn't prophesy the other presidents. 
you guessed. They were educated guesses at that. Everybody had a, a reasonably good idea of who was going to win certain elections. Not who they wanted to win, but who was likely to win. You can look at polls and who the last president was to win, what party they were from. There are a bunch of different factors that come into who's going to win the next election. You would have to have told us some name completely out of the blue and actually been right about that years before it even took place for me to believe that it could have even possibly be a prophecy. You gave us educated guesses, not prophecies. But let's continue. Even President Trump, and no, but soon as something didn't look like it happened, boy, they jump on the bandwagon to attack you. It didn't. It didn't happen. What you're saying here is nonsense. You were wrong. Just admit that you lied about a prophecy. That's all I'm asking, man. And my question is, how many of those people that are attacking, A, are, are you a prophet? So how can you, the, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that the prophets are to judge the prophets. That's what it says. Oh, there you go. There's his explanation for why he can't be criticized for false prophecies. Because you aren't a prophet in his eyes. The prophets that prophesied, quote unquote, that Biden was going to win, they got a prophecy correct. Supposed prophecy. They got a supposed prophecy correct, right? So they should be able to criticize you. No, you're only a prophet if he says you're a prophet. And you know who he calls prophets? Anybody who agrees with him. Isn't that convenient? If a prophet is to prophesy, okay, let the others judge the other prophets. That's what he was speaking about. And so, you know, are they prophets? Do they stand in a fivefold office of a prophet? Second, do they have a positional grace and an authority by God? Just because you're a prophet doesn't mean that you might be called to be a prophet to the nation. Okay. There's different rank and file and um, responsibilities that are given to the prophets or to any fivefold office. And, and, and so you look at the list of people. Are they prophets? Yes or no? Second, if they are prophets, have they been assigned by Jesus, the Lord of the church, this is the holy thing, to prophesy to a nation? Oh, please, dude. You are grasping at straws. It is the absolute worst. Honestly, it's kind of entertaining to watch. Let me show you guys what he has to say when people disagree with him. He is not kind, to say the least. Check this one out. I think this clip came out January 22nd, so it was immediately after Biden was inaugurated. This is how he initially reacted to the fact that he got a prophecy wrong. But I have stood, and I stand with God. I will stand with his loyalty, whether you think I'm false or not. If that's what you think, then you can take your opinion and you can shove it. Oh, wow. That is not what I expected to come out of a preacher's mouth at a church, but okay. If that's how you feel, he's actually been doing a lot of these tours and stuff with his wife. I mean, they run a mega church in Omaha, Nebraska, I believe. His wife is heavily involved in all of it, you know, writing the sermons, and she even does her own sermons and stuff. This one was mid-September 2021. This is what she had to say to people who were criticizing them about how much they talk about Donald Trump. Her name is Brenda Kuhneman, by the way. It's not just a political thing. I hear people say, oh, you guys are just whole propping up a person and Trump. It's not just a political thing. I hear people say, you're just propping up a person and Trump. First few words, and I'm absolutely fascinated where this is going. And all of that, and I'm like, no, we're propping up what, what he has st stood for. We're, we're get just simply getting behind what a man chose to stand for. We have a, a president, a real president, who has stood more for the body of Christ and his church to be liberated. In my lifetime, he's the only president that even dared challenge the lying Johnson Amendment. Yeah, this goes on for a while. I had to cut it off somewhere, but there seemed to be no period in that sentence. So anyways, that's Brenda Kuhneman. That's Hank Kuhneman. They like to come in together and absolutely go nuts over Donald Trump. They love him. He is part of their theology now. Seriously, that's no exaggeration. Check this one out, late March 2022. This is also Brenda Kuhneman. I came home from the office one day, and I remember we walked into the house from the garage. I mean, we were just exhausted. We'd had it. We said, God, you know we're not a cult. We preach the Bible. 
We pray in tongues. I honestly had no idea that those two things were qualifications. I mean, Jim Jones was also a, a Bible preacher. I don't know if he spoke in tongues or not. Maybe. Probably not. But either way, I mean, he, he preached the Bible too. It was Jim Jones not a cult leader. I mean, she's not thinking critically about this. Either that or she's flat out lying. She knows she's not telling the truth. She must. I have to imagine. Listen to this. I can't find anything, and believe me, I've looked, anything on the left that is good to support. Okay, it's filled with lies and homosexuality and abominations. And, you know, in fact, the party, I'll just say it, the Democrat Party put straight up on their platform. On their platform that we are the party of the non-religious. We don't want God. We're atheists. That's what they've said. You can go read it yourself. Uh, no, it doesn't say that anywhere. Where did she pick that up? Is she lying? It seems to me that she is. I don't know any other way around this. Either she's lying or somebody gave her some kind of false information and she believed it without thinking about it critically. I don't know what happened here, but there's some hang up along the way. And that makes me believe that she's a grifter, plain and simple. That's the way I see it. I don't say that about everybody. But I feel like she falls into the category of scamming people. Like I said, just my opinion. I don't know. Maybe she's honest about her beliefs. Who knows? So anyways, yeah, that's, Bre uh, that's Brenda and Hank Kuhneman. Wanted to introduce you to him because Hank Kuhneman just came out with something new. Mid-April 2022 had some more to say about Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Before we listen to this, let me read what's on screen here. He has a Bible verse up. It says... Daniel 6.13, King James Version. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but marketh his petition three times a day. Do they think that God actually spoke like that or whatever, or that Daniel did? Like, why do they insist on using the King James Version? It is less accurate than a translation like the NIV or something. Why do they continue to use KJV? I just don't get it. Anyway, it's beside the point. So they quoted Daniel, the book of Daniel. Listen to what Hank Kuhneman has to say here, mid-April 2022. I don't pray for him as a president. I don't call him president. I don't even acknowledge him as president-elect because he wasn't elected. He stole it. Simply untrue. He's a treasonous thief. What leads you to believe that he's treasonous or that he's a thief? You haven't provided any evidence to us that there was foul play, and, and we've been waiting for it for years now. This really started in 2020, didn't it? And we're in 2022 now. We've been waiting. What happened? Give us evidence. All I need is evidence, and I will simply accept that there was this big conspiracy that Trump lost because Biden stole it, blah, blah, blah. I just need evidence. Simple as that. You haven't provided it. So Daniel didn't have any regard, so why should I? Now, if he was... If he was honestly elected, which he wasn't, and he earned it and had God's backing, then I would. So I pray for him. Lord, save his soul. It's not too late. And remove the man. You know, Biden is a Catholic, a deeply, deeply devout Catholic, too. He is giga religious. Biden believes it to the bottom of his soul. And I, he's honestly a little more religious than I'm comfortable with. He's just not Hank Kuhneman's specific brand of Christian nationalist, and that's really where the problem lies. If Biden was his version of Christian nationalist, he would probably like him a lot more than he does. See, these people are desperately trying to turn this into a Christian extremist country, and until they succeed, they're not going to stop. And they aren't going to, when they finally do succeed, or if they finally do succeed, they're not going to accept Catholics. If you're a moderate Christian, I promise you, this is not the place that you're going to want to live. You're not going to want to live in the world that these Christian nationalists have in mind. They don't like you if you're a Christian. They need you to be an evangelical. The next section here just pops up. There's a, another Bible verse, Psalms 92, 11. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Okay. Let's listen to his comments on this one. I'm going to hear about it on the news. I'm going to hear my desire of the wicked. Yeah, get rid of this wrong, treasonous lie. 
Yeah, so he avoided specifically saying Biden for some reason. Just come out and say it. Like, I don't understand. Just say Biden. We know who you're talking about here. Get rid of these stupid mandates and all these things are trying to do. What mandates? What mandates? Show me. Tell me. Point to the bill. Point to the problem that you're facing. We're not facing any mandates in this country right now. There are no vaccine mandates. There are no mask mandates being pushed by the government. There are some private companies who have chosen to enact mask mandates, but that's a private company's choice, man. They can do what they want. You have nothing to do with that. If the gas station wants to make you wear a mask when you're inside, who are you to say no? These companies can make decisions for themselves. What mandates are you talking about? There are no government mandates happening right now in the U.S. I'm going to hear it and I'm going to see it that would rise up against me. Why? Because I'm anointed. Wow. The dude believes himself to be anointed. And he says he knows this stuff is going to happen. He has divine insight because he's anointed. Because I'm anointed. That is a level of delusion I absolutely cannot touch. And, and I really don't use that term lightly. This is a level of disconnected from reality I cannot get my mind around. Next, we're going to talk about political candidate Rachel Hamm. Apparently, she believes she empathically divined how her voting district feels. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Next door I wanted to talk about is about Rachel Ham. I wanted to mention her because George Takei actually tweeted about her recently. If you're unfamiliar, George Takei, I think he played Sulu on Star Trek, the original series Star Trek, incredibly famous, really, really big deal, and he's also an atheist, for the record. He tweeted about Rachel Ham. He tweeted this article, as a matter of fact. The article's title is, GOP candidate claims she knows Trump won California because of her empath powers in Bunker's interview. For the record, this is true, what this article wrote here, but it's from a website that I don't recognize, comicsands.com. I don't know what that is. So I wanted to go to a slightly more reputable website rather than this one. Raw Story wrote about it too. The title of the Raw Story one is California Secretary of State Candidate Claims to Have Empath Powers Proving Trump Won. I just want to point something out real quick. Take a look at the picture that you see in here. This woman is legitimately bonkers, I guess you could say. So I feel like that's a fair summary of her beliefs and personality and things. But you see how they picked this picture of her with her eyes wide open like this. It, this picture intentionally made her look crazy. Um, this is called propaganda. I'm calling propaganda out when I cover these pastors and these you know, these wing nuts and stuff. I, I call it out then, and I'm calling it out now. This woman has deep, deep issues, but this is propaganda, and this is how propaganda works. If you notice, I never, ever take screenshots or pictures of people like this for my thumbnails. Never. I feel like it unfairly represents the person, and all, it's just not right, in my opinion, but th that's beside the point. I just wanted to give this article a read a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's essentially the exact same thing that's on the Raw Story article, so I'm going to read the George Takei article, just because that's what this all came from. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to some of the other stuff Rachel Hammes talked about. And we're going to talk about some of the newer stuff she said even more recently. So let's just kind of skim through this article. It's written by John Sundholm, July 29th, 2021. And again, it was written on Comic Sans 
Com. Given its enormous population of city dwellers and people of color, it's nearly impossible for a Republican presidential candidate to win the state of California. Indeed, a Republican has not even come close to doing so since 1988. Be that as it may, GOP political candidate Rachel Hamm claims to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that former Republican President Donald Trump won California in 2020, and she knows this because she's an empath who feels vibes, you see. 100% true. Absolutely true what they're saying here, and I'll show you a clip to prove it. Unfortunately, the clip that they're talking about here has been removed. I think it was a Steve Bannon interview that she did, but there are others. I couldn't find the specific one, but there are others, and we'll get to them in a second. Let's keep reading. Ham, who is running for Secretary of State in California, made her claims while talking to far-right Voldemort Steve Bannon on his show Real America's Voice. Watch the Bunkers video below. Yeah, that's a, here's another thing, Voldemort. This isn't... This isn't a news, I, you could say this isn't a news article, this is not a journalistic article, it's a commentary article, and that's okay, I do commentary too, but it's easy to confuse the two, so I just want to point that out so you guys are aware. They used a propagandistic image in their thumbnail, and they're using language that is not unbiased as a news source should be which makes them not a news source or just a commentary source so anyway let's talk about rachel ham now now that we've talked about some of the article that george takei posted this came out mid-march 2022 she was on the doctor doctor quote unquote doctor mary cruelly show give this a listen see what she had to say satan also has a plan for your life and that's something that I think is sometimes eye-opening to people. Like they don't realize how much there's a battle over your life and over your destiny and how we have to war to sometimes get ourselves into that promised land. You know, there shouldn't be a battle between God and Satan. God should just win. He's all powerful, right? Why do they frame this up like there's going to be this massive war or that there's a war unfolding right now between the two? It's just weird. Can't God snap his fingers and be done with Satan? Should we be worried about the War of Armageddon? Should we be making friends with Satan right now? I'm getting a little concerned. And for me, the war started really young when I was pre in preschool. Um, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, so I was normally home with her. But then she had to have surgery on her neck. And it was going to be quite the, the recovery process and going to be just a long journey. So my grandmother offered to put me in preschool since... It would be hard for my mom to recover and also take care of me. So she took her up on that. And the preschool was a coven that was run by witches. And really it was the cover was that it was a preschool. But in reality, it was a coven where they were training children. OK, I, I don't believe you. That That's completely unrealistic and unbelievable to anybody except the most gullible sucker evangelicals alive. If you can give me some evidence of that, I would review it but i seriously truly do not believe a word out of her mouth right now for the sake of completion i was told last time i talked about rachel ham that the story that she's telling here is actually almost word for word a copy from somebody else's story some book i don't remember what it was it wasn't michelle remembers that was a totally separate thing but there's some story that somebody told that like made national news during the satanic panic, I think. And it's like almost word for word copied from that person, which makes me believe it even less, honestly. If somebody remembers what I'm talking about, just put it in the comments. I would appreciate it. I'll pin it to the top if I find it. In satanic rituals and in all things satanic and how to be a satanist literally okay there are different types of satanists uh there's the satanic temple there's the church of satan there are also other types of satanists but the two that i just mentioned are non-theistic they don't cast spells they don't believe in witchcraft you know all this other stuff it's all nonsense to them they have basic tenets which involve rough moral virtues they have moral beliefs and things and ways to live their life and that's about it man they don't do blood sacrifices they don't try to appease satan by praying to him or any of that other nonsense it's this is a complete misrepresentation and misunderstanding of what satanism is and it shows that she has no idea what she's talking about it was day one it was it was immediate and i then you know just begged to not go back but 
I didn't say what was happening there though, because they made you feel like you were complicit. So you would never tell because you think you're equally guilty. It's honestly completely disgusting how she's framing this up. It's truly evil the way she's framing this. She's framing it in a way that she can drag in the most gullible suckers, and that is really, really sad. It's really sad that people fall for this, that they believe it. So you remember earlier I was talking about that article that was referencing this clip of her saying that she knows Trump won because she is an empath and she divined that the voters in California voted for Trump. So Trump won California because she's an empath and she knows that. Well, this is similar to that. Like I said, I couldn't find that specific video since Steve Bannon took it down, but I found something similar on another show called The MC Files, hosted by Christopher McDonald. She was on his show, so let's give this one a look. Late March 2022. I had talked about having the dream about the red wave and how every single state was turning. It was kind of like, um, uh, what is that show, uh, Wheel of Fortune, where yes. they tap the thing yeah. that you know, turns. <laughs> what, it was yeah. like that. It was like a map, and it was like ding, 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 like all the states turning until the whole map was red. And I knew that that was the truth. You knew that that was the truth. Interesting. How did you know that that was the truth? How did you know it was the truth and not just a dream? How did you determine that God told you this and it wasn't just some fever dream that you had? I would say it would have to be true first and foremost. It being true doesn't prove that it came from God. But if God told you something, then it would necessarily have to be true. The fact that it didn't come true tells me that God didn't tell you that at all. That every every single state was red, specifically with the 2020 election. I, I believe think that, that every single state went red, and I know people are in a mob. Yeah, I don't care. I feel fairly certain that that is what happened. I'm with you, and that it's only fraud that that made it look otherwise. She believes that California went red. California voted for Donald Trump. This is a level of delusion that we absolutely can't even touch. I mean, this isn't a, a new thing either. Like I said, this clip was from March, I think, March 2022, right? Yeah, late March 2022. She's been saying this for a while, man. I mean, this article that George Takei tweeted out was written back in July of 2021. And that first interview I covered mid-March 2022 this one with the MC files was late March 2022, but all the way back in October 2021, late October 2021, she went on this famous QAnon interpreter, I guess, QAnon interpreters live stream named Delora O'Brien to talk about similar things. QAnon isn't a traditional re re religion like you would find many other religions are. So it doesn't really have pastors exactly. Christian pastors can buy into the QAnon belief system and integrate it into their sermons, and they often do, like Johnny Enlow or others. But QAnon, if somebody is purely, strictly QAnon, like Delora O'Brien here, you don't call them a QAnon pastor, you call them a QAnon interpreter, because the whole QAnon thing is such a confusing mess. You need somebody to interpret it and tell you what it means. It's like a it's like a Da Vinci Code level thing. It's so confusing. It's all over the place. So anyways, Delora O'Brien is a QAnon interpreter, and she had Rachel Ham on to talk to her. So let's see what they had to say to each other late October 2021. I'm a big dreamer, but I haven't uh -huh. had a lot of visions. I'm a big dreamer, but I haven't had a lot of visions. She's actually saying this in a religious way. She's saying that, like, she's a seer. Like, God gives her prophecy through dreams, but she doesn't see many visions while she's awake or whatever. She's claiming to be a prophet of God here. So I'm laying, laying there wide awake, and I see a night sky come over me in my bed, and I see a door, like, laying over me, and then, then the door lifts up, and it turns towards me and it opens. And I was like, it looks like a door just opened in the heavenlies to me. But I didn't know to what or what it really meant. I, it felt right. powerful, but I didn't know, right. you know. So then the next morning, he's on live at the 11th hour. He being Robin Bullock, by the way. They're talking about Robin Bullock in his show. If you're unfamiliar with Robin Bullock, we'll cover him in a second. People call him Silly Ray Cyrus. Uh, like I said, we'll get there. So then the next morning, he's on live at the 11th hour show that I watch every every Tuesday. And he said, um, he starts prophesying. And he said, now someone 
has just had a door open to them in the heavenlies. Ah. And oh, and oh, and I like I like got the chills and the hair stands up and I'm like leaning towards my computer, you know. And he said, and for that person, I'm hearing secretary. And I was contemplating like, does am I supposed to run this? for office? Does what he? Know this? Does he no. know? This? No. No. So he's special to me too. You know, when God uses someone in your life like that, it's so it's so profound and so. Yeah, yeah, that was a very he's, um, he, he's the real deal. Him and like his it. wife. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to make this whole thing about Robin. I really don't, but they're the real deal. My brow is so hecking furrowed right now. I swear when I get older, I'm gonna have just permanent lines across my forehead from watching this ridiculous stuff. They believe that Robin Bullock is a full blown prophet of God that is speaking to them specifically. This is bizarre. For the record, this is called cold reading. I see psychics do this all the time. You say a couple of words. I'm hearing the letter J, and I'm thinking the word cancer. Has anybody, can anyone connect that for me? And the audience says, my grandfather's name is John, and he has cancer. We just found out. And everybody in the crowd's like, oh my god, he's... He's a prophet. He knew. How did he know? You throw out any letter and any ailment, and somebody in your audience is going to connect the dots. That's how cold reading works. That's such a simple, basic parlor trick. And they're acting like the dude is like a prophet of God because he did some basic parlor trick. It's ridiculous, dude. Now I got to find the most ridiculous Robin Bullock clip that I have. I have uh, 33 clips of Robin Bullock now. Let's see. Which one is the most ridiculous? Oh, this is a this is a tough decision. Um, OK, I'll tell you what. This is one that I haven't played before. Robin Bullock famously called Joe Biden a jackal. He calls him a jackal constantly. He's always referring to him as a jackal. I don't understand why, but, you know. He's the jackal expert. He made up a song about it. Listen to this. Grab a jackal by the leg, shake him like a dog, throw him all across the ground. Grab a jackal by the leg, shake him like a dog, and throw him across the ground. Yeah, somebody sent me this clip originally because of the hand movements that uh, Robin Bullock was making. I, I wasn't really thinking about that so much as the fact that he calls Joe Biden a jackal all the time. That's neither here nor there. Uh, let me find another one, a really good one. Um, so hard to choose. There are so many good ones. Okay, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Uh, this one is Robin Bullock explaining to us how Noah moved these giant timbers around when he built the ark. Listen to this one. And you have to ask yourself this. How did he move those timbers around? Yeah. How did he pick up those timbers and Massive. move them around? Well, there's something called, you know, everything has a frequency. Yeah. This this uh, AirPod case has a frequency. Well, I mean, it, yes, it does have a frequency because it's an electronic device that, that works wirelessly. But he's not just saying wirelessly connecting items have frequencies. He's not talking about that. He's talking about wood, uh, metal, everything, every item. Even we have a frequency, uh, a frequency, quote unquote, according to Robin Bullock. Keep listening. This this uh, AirPod case has a frequency. If you could, because it's made of matter, right. if you could match the frequency of this AirPod case and you knew what it was and you could match it, you could pick it up off the ground without touching it just through wow. sound dude what are you talking about you can move objects just through sound with your hand if you could match the frequency of timber you could pick up gigantic pieces of timber you could pick up buildings with your hands by matching their frequencies it had to be moved with sound well that's brilliance of mind mm. that we don't possess right now we uh, see all the technology just actually showed how dumb man has become <laughs> yeah. in comparison to how smart Noah and Adam and all of them were. Wow, man. Yeah, so that's that's Robin Bullock. I, I was trying to find the best clip that represents him as a person, but I don't know. Like I said, I have 33 clips of the guy, and each one is crazier than the last. I couldn't pick one. I couldn't just pick one. 
Um, so anyway, point is, Rachel Ham and Delora O'Brien apparently really, really deeply believe every word that Robin Bullock has to say, and they think that he's like this amazing prophet that has insight from God in, in mysterious ways. Just bizarre, dude. Check out the next clip. Same interview, Delora O'Brien and Rachel Ham, late October 2021. Listen to this. Do you remember when o uh, uh, Obama was president? And for those eight years, we were having a hard time saying Merry Christmas? Uh, no, I don't remember that. I don't think anybody remembers that because it's a fantasy. That never happened. There was never this war on Christmas that they wanted there to be. They fabricated this war so that they could feel persecuted. Nobody was ever telling anyone not to say Merry Christmas. Some people chose to say Happy Holidays because they recognized there were Jewish people in this country and atheist people in this country and all kinds of different types of people. I mean, there are Jehovah's Witnesses too. Your, your brand of evangelicalism isn't the only thing that exists. There are a lot of people out there. But no, somebody says Happy Holidays and it's an attack on them specifically. No, Delora, I don't remember that. Nobody remembers that. I remember you losing your mind over the fact that some people chose to say happy holidays of their own free will. I remember that. Do you remember when o uh, uh, Obama was president and for those eight years we were having a hard time saying Merry Christmas? Ugh, yeah. <laughs> How Things have changed yeah. so much, and that's, that's a lot due to President Trump. Yes. Obviously, yes, and I God think even him. his absence is important, too, because the Lord Absolutely. is working powerfully Absolutely. in his absence. They are so disconnected from reality, dude. So disconnected from reality. You know the scariest part about all this? I've been going through some of her stuff for a while. Uh, let's see. So far, we've spent around 20 minutes talking about Rachel Ham, right? Well, here's where it gets real. I'm going to lay this out for you. Early April 2022, brand new clip just came out. This is between Craig Deleuze and Rachel Ham, I believe his name is. Listen to what she has to say here. Uh, by the way, just a quick reminder, she's running for Secretary of State for the state of California. My views are a little bit controversial when it comes to voter registration. Everyone is wanting to make it as easy as possible and, and kind of appeal to the lowest common denominator of, of the, the easiest way to get as many people registered as possible. Yeah, I want to get as many people registered as possible to vote. Absolutely. You know what's required to register to vote in the first place? You need all the same stuff that you need to get your license. You need it, your license at the very least or birth certificate, social security card. You know what? Let's just look it up. I guess it depends on the state that you're in, but let's look up just New York because that's a state that I'm in. To register online, apparently you can register to vote online. You need your New York state driver's license permit or non-driver ID card, a zip code currently on record with the DMV, and you need... A social security number those are the things that you need we're not saying we want anybody to just come in and be able to register like absolutely anybody whoever wants to just sign this form and it's all you that's not what we want that's not what we have you're still required to turn over all kinds of documentation to register to vote i see it the exact opposite i want to make it hard i want it to be something that people have to choose and re-choose and have to prove that they're a citizen and all i mean you already have to do that you already have to choose to register to vote and then you put your signature down and they do the whole signature matching thing and everything else. This is all stuff that already exists. We just want to get as many people registered as humanly possible. That's what we want. You are trying to restrict people's ability to vote at all because lower turnout means Republicans are more likely to win. That's how it works. Statistically, Republicans are more likely to win because older people tend to lean more Republican and they'd crawl over broken glass to vote for their guy. That is why lower turnout equals Republican wins. And that's why really Republicans try to restrict voting rights. I would love, and again, I know this is, this is controversial, some people like it, some people hate it, you know, but um, I think we should clean the slate. No, who she's talking to here, some people like it, some people hate it. No, the people that, that she's talking to right now, she knows that they would love it. She's pandering to her audience right now. 
I think we should clean the slate completely and have people have to re-register, say, every eight years or maybe even every 12 years. You know, that's kind of already the law, isn't it? When are you kicked off of voter rolls? Yeah, they're called voter purges. Um, yeah, I'm having trouble finding the information specifically, but states are constantly kicking people off the voter rolls. This is not some unique, amazing idea that she's presenting to us. But you have to re-register. You have to stay you know, proving that you still want to vote, that you're still alive and that you still want to vote, that you still live in the place where you're saying you live. And so that's what I would like to do with voter registration. There is a law, the, Na the National Voter Registration Act of 1984, that is really problematic, really makes it difficult to get people off the voter rolls once they're on. That's because voting should be a right. You should have a right to vote. It shouldn't be like, you know, politicians can remove you anytime they want. That is how... They fix things. That's how they rig things to give an edge to themselves. They kick people off voter rolls. They lower it to a single day to vote. Why do that? They eliminate absentee ballots. Why? We have incredible technology today. Types of technologies that can detect fraud before it happens practically. I mean, we have artificial intelligence that can detect all kinds of crazy stuff. There is no need to kick, uh, to kick people off of voter rolls when we can just compare the voter rolls to death certificates and find out who voted and who has a death certificate on file. Like, there are so many other solutions to this other than making people's lives miserable, other than making it nearly impossible to vote. This is a cheap trick by corrupt politicians to try to give themselves an edge. Same as gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is notoriously a corrupt tactic to give yourself an edge over the other politicians. It's anti-democratic. Same as kicking people off the voter rolls. It's anti-democratic. If you don't want a democracy in the United States, then just say that. You don't have to pretend. Republican politicians have famously, in certain areas, gone through data and found the type of ID that is least likely to be held by African-American voters and, and most likely to be held by white voters. And they made that ID the one that's required to vote in their district. They've done things like that. They use the system to give themselves an advantage. It's anti-democratic, it's corrupt, it's evil, and that's exactly what we've come to expect from Republicans. That's where the whole voter ID thing came from in the first place, was that case. I think it was in North Carolina, I forget now. But I think the Supreme Court shot that specific thing down, or one of the courts shot that specific case down. But then ID voting it came up as an issue in general, and it's been a hotly debated topic for, like, ever. It originated as a racist policy to give themselves a better edge on the election. So that's Rachel Ham. She's running for Secretary of State in California, not likely to win, but she has a real platform. She has a platform and people are listening to her. We've got to pay attention to what's happening with her right now. Next, we're going to talk about Greg Locke's belief that he can cure mental conditions like bipolar disorder and autism. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Next story I wanted to talk about is about Greg Locke. Let me reintroduce you to him if you're unfamiliar. I know a lot of people are coming to the channel for the first time, so let me show you what kind of a person Greg Locke is. Check this clip out. This is mid-April 2022, brand new. We have to stop compromising to the propaganda. So I say this and we volley back. One of the things we did to push back against the nonsense is not only put up the sign, but we told our folks we so believe in our First Amendment right to gather under this tent and to worship Jesus Christ, that if you show up with your propaganda machine and you try to impede on our First Amendment right, I said, our boys will meet you at the door of this tent with our Second Amendment right because we're not playing your Democrat games. He was saying that to the police and the news 
who were showing up trying to encourage him or enforce the lockdown measures that were being taken in Tennessee. We were trying to enter a temporary lockdown. It was like 30 days or something like that for public health purposes. And he absolutely refused to keep people safe, to keep his community safe. He put them at risk by staying open. And I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that people suffered because of the decisions that he made. And like I said, when the cops showed up to enforce the lockdown, he told them that. You come here trying to enforce the lockdown, we're going to meet you at the door with our Second Amendment rights. I don't know how that's viewed as anything other than a threat. This is a church, and we're going to stand. And this is Pastor Greg Locke using his First Amendment. I mean, this is what it's all about. It's standing up against the propaganda machine. Yeah, absolutely unhinged stuff, dude. Let me show you another clip from Greg Locke. This one came out le late February 2022. Not that old. Check this one out. This is what else he's been up to. We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. Three of you in the room right now. You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil-worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We got your last name. We even got an address for one of you. Yeah, he believes that he discovered witches in his congregation that were trying to infiltrate and cause problems or some other nonsense. He is not only one of the most famous megachurch pastors in the U.S., not only one of the most unhinged, as evidenced by this last clip, but also he's got plenty of money to throw around. I'll put it that way. There's this church called Patriot Church. I covered them a while back. Ken Peters is the guy's name, the, the pastor there. And he has seamlessly intertwined religion with politics by making Trump basically one of his religious figures. In case you were thinking, whoa, you're not allowed to endorse candidates at church. Uh, you're at the wrong church. <laughs> this is Patriot Church. We endorse whoever we want to endorse. And you're like, well, what about your 501c3? Well, two things there. Number one, I had a 501c3 in Spokane. That never stopped me. Okay? But when we started this church here in Tennessee, we are not a 501c3, so we can do whatever the, we want. Whatever we want. We're a free church. We're, uh, we're 5081A, which is in the IRS code. It's totally awesome and cool. We're a free church. So we do endorse candidates. And as it turns out, Patriot Church, Knoxville campus, just posted this on Facebook, I believe, mid-April 2022. Breaking, a year and a half ago, the Lord called my wife and I to, pl it would be me and my wife, that's neither here nor there, to plant a new church in Tennessee called Patriot Church. God has now led us to buy this prime piece of property, which is way beyond our natural ability. We set a goal to raise 200000 for the down payment. Well, tonight our dear friends, Pastor Greg and Ty Locke, handed me a check to Patriot Church for $100,000 from Global Vision Bible Church. Thank you, Pastor Greg and Ty and Global Vision from Ken and Valencia and Patriot Church. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. Patriot Church is here to stay. Watch out, devil. Greg Locke gave this dude $100,000. Oh my God. I've never seen that much money in my life. That is a lot of money, dude. It just to hand it over like that? Jesus Christ. He's one of the most famous, one of the most extreme, and apparently plenty wealthy to go along with it. So after calling out the witches, or actually it may have been right before calling out the witches, he had something else to say. January 30th, 2022, dude will do basically anything to get himself in the news. Give this one a watch. He went on stage and he had this to say. But this Wednesday, if I say this, yeah. Wednesday, we gonna have a burning service. Oh, yes, you heard me well. We're going to send that mess back to hell where it belongs. We're going to have us a burning service. I mean a burning service. That's right. He held a book burning. 
Uh, not just books, though. He, he burned anything, any part of culture that he doesn't like. He burned all kinds of stuff. He's about to list it here for us. And we're going to burn some stuff up in this house. We're going to get rid of some unholy covenants and alliances and some word curses and some witchcraft that's been spoken over. We're going to get rid of We're going to free some homes. We're going to free some marriages. We're going to burn some stuff. I don't care what Hasbro says. Ouija boards are a portal to hell. No, it's fake, Greg. It's all fake. He is convinced that witchcraft is real, and it is truly so sad. So bring some Ouija boards. Get rid of it, tarot cards. You better get rid of that Harry Potter mess in your house. That is full-blown witchcraft. It's witchcraft. And the devil knows it. That's why he's mad at the sound system. That, that the devil knows that that's why he's mad at the sound system is that what he said because there was feedback maybe it's because you're yelling into the microphone do you ever consider that one there's a natural explanation for some things greg you say well i got the collector's edition <laughs> well i'll bring extra lighter fluid for you then yeah so he held a burning service and you're if you're curious how that went i put it on my main channel telltale there's a link in the description to my main channel just search through it and you'll find you know the the burning situation there was a protester that showed up and threw a bible into the fire it was a big deal you got to watch that if you haven't seen it already but anyway he's always been really weird about this stuff uh this next clip this is from mid-april 2022 and it's a message that my mom should have heard my mom was super into romance novels i don't know why that was definitely something that was against the jehovah's witness religion she read them anyways and uh greg Locke has something very specific to say about romance novels check this one out mid-april 2022 if you can't sleep at night here's why number one you got a curse you need to break off number two you have a dream catcher in your house or some sort of occult paraphernalia it's fake greg Come on, man. It's fake. Just come back to reality with everybody else. It's not real. You got a Ouija board in your house? It better get out. You got a cultic nonsense in your house? It better get out. Some of you women, you got some of them steamy romance novels? It better get out in the name of Jesus. No wonder you can't sleep at night. You laying around thinking about everybody else's husband and making your sleep on the couch. Somebody help me, Holy Ghost. I'm about to preach up in his house. You know, this is oddly specific. We sure he's not talking about his own situation? That's kind of weird, right? He's getting, like, awfully upset about it. Nine times out of ten, if you have strict arthritis in your body, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you have something in your past you've not made peace with because that bitterness got in your bones. Now he's getting into science denial at best. This isn't even science denial. This is an outright claim that there are no physical or mental il ailments of any sort. It is all tied to demons or witchcraft or something like that. This is so incredibly deeply wrong. And your problem is not what you're eating. It's what's eating you. And some of you after tonight, you're going to sleep better than you have ever slept in years. You ain't going to need to. You ain't going to need to smoke no weed to do it. I assumed that his church wouldn't do something like that anyways. I assumed that they were super anti-drug and anti-alcohol. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're okay with alcohol. Who knows? You ain't going to have to sit Indian style in some yoga position and do some kind of transcendental meditation. Because if you've done that, you've got a demon anyhow needs to come out. All this yoga, all this hypnosis, all this bunch of Eastern mysticism nonsense. No wonder you can't sleep at night. Get that garbage out of your house. Wow, dude. So he, he's basically routing every problem that anybody ever has, any, any ailment, physical or mental or otherwise, routing it all back to demons. No matter what it is. Rheumatoid arthritis, it's actually demons. If you read the Bible properly, uh, properly, like a good Christian does, you wouldn't have rheumatoid arthritis. That's not the only ailment either. Late January 2022, he had this one to say. Check this one out. Do not, do not jump up right now and rebuke me for what I'm about to say. On three occasions, we're going to go through all of them, not today, thank God. On three occasions, kids were brought to Jesus. Not of their own will, of their own volition, but by their parents. 
that had epileptic fits. Anger issues. Outbursts of emotion. Okay. And because we've called it possession, parents refuse to deal with it. Are you telling me my kid's possessed? No, I'm telling you, your kid could be demonized and attacked, but your doctor calls it autism. How deeply wrong is that? How deeply wrong is that? I've played this clip on my channel before. There's a reason I'm talking about it now. He says autism is actually demonic possession. He says rheumatoid arthritis is actually demonic possession. It gets worse. Keep listening. I don't care if you stand or not. I don't care if you leave or not. I don't care if you don't care if I stand or leave or not. I, okay? I'm telling you, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ for your children and their children's children. There's deliverance in that. Yeah, he actually got a lot of pushback on that one. He, he, you know, his church didn't really like him saying that bit about autism. They had no problem with it when he talked about rheumatoid arthritis or any of the other stuff that he said. It's, it's weird that uh, the autism thing is the thing that stuck with him. But here's where it gets interesting. The church members who disagreed with his take on that, they left. And you know who's left in the church after that? The people who do agree with him. So now his church is pretty much made up of people who agree that rheumatoid arthritis and autism aren't real. They're caused by demons. It gets even worse than that. Early April 2022. Listen to this one. Now I know what your doctor says, and I don't care what the news media says. I know what your doctor says. You know why some of you have demonic activity? You've given them legal authority because you believe the medical diagnosis. Huh? You believe the medical diagnosis. You say, we have brother life. You're not a doctor. Nope, not even a nurse yet. I do have a PhD. Preach hellfire damnation every time I can. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of you have given the devil legal authority and grounds and rights to your life because you believe the medical diagnosis when a doctor looks you in the face and says, well, what you have is bipolar disorder. What you have is a spirit that needs to be cast out so you can have some peace is what you've got. This is so incredibly wrong, dude. So incredibly wrong. This guy needs to be called out for this. He is seriously refusing to accept that mental conditions or physical conditions that people deal with are real. He thinks it's all demonic possession. What about amputees? What about somebody who lost an arm? Is that a demon too, Greg? Like, is everything a demon? Is that chair a demon? Is the demon in the room with us right now? Seriously. Just bear with me here. It gets stranger. It gets stranger. Keep listening. Multiple personality disorder. It's demonization is what it is. 1,000%. I don't care what the newspaper says. I don't care what the newspaper says about that either. The newspaper isn't the one defining this stuff. It's scientists defining this stuff. You're conflating the scientific community, things that we know, with the media. Somebody that's easy to demonize. A group that's easy to dismiss as fake news or whatever else. Okay, you don't want to believe the media? Fine. Don't believe the media. I don't believe the media either. Whatever. But when we have physical evidence of what we're talking about, when we have science and data to back this stuff up, when we can run a test and repeat that test and get the same result over and over again. You can't deny that. I mean, I guess you can, but you're just speaking nonsense when you do. Nobody has any reason to believe anything that you say. Nobody has any reason to respect your opinions on any subject. It is honestly ridiculous and sad that he picks out random mental or physical conditions that he has a problem with and just says that it's demons. We see it every week. Did you know that we could go to a, a crazy house right now? I'm talking about a, a padded party room. People slobbered on themselves. 
can't feed themselves, messing all over, wetting all over themselves, moaning, screaming, crying, and all they do is... Okay, do you think that that's what a mental institution looks like? I feel like there are probably some that look like that, like in the court system or whatever, but I feel like he's got this very specific view of what a mental institution looks like, and usually those things are set up to be outpatient or short-term inpatient in... in the best case scenario but okay let's continue let's assume that what he's talking about next is a full-blown mental institution inpatient long term people who have such deep mental conditions that there's no chance of them ever getting out of there because they're literally they're, they're not in the same reality as us like they're totally disconnected from everything and everybody okay let, let's just take that as an example go on i'm listening greg crying and all they do is keep them doped up on medication and keep them worse get them off that medication for about 45 hours and let me and the deliverance team walk up in one of them crazy houses with some bibles and some anointing oil and i'm telling you we can cast out the spirit of multiple personality insanity madness the lunatic spirit wow dude so he's saying that he has the capability to cure everybody of mental conditions of any sort whatsoever. Get them off of medications, send them the deliverance team in with Bibles for 45 minutes, and cast those demons out, and they'll all be better. You know what, Greg? You can actually run that test right now. You can do that right now. There's a place called Death Row with truly mentally ill people there, all, and they're not being given medication, most of them. You can just go up there, visit them, do your Bible thing, and run the test. You can test it out. See if it works. See if God is on your side and see if there really is a demon in these people. You don't have to go into these padded rooms. There's nothing holding you back now, Greg. I know the only reason you're saying this stuff is because nobody would ever let you within the 100 feet of a mental institution unless you were a patient there. But you don't have to get within 100 feet of a mental institution. All you have to do is go to a prison, visit death row inmates, or, or even just like lifetime inmates, people who have life sentences or multiple life sentences, and cast the demons out. See if they're cured. Lock yourself in a room with them for two weeks after curing them of demons and see if it worked. Would you be comfortable enough with that situation? So look, don't come at me with all your medical terminology nonsense. I believe what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say anything about what you're talking about. You are making this up off the top of your head. I don't care what Sister Wigglejaw and Dr. Bottlestopper says. I don't know who that is or what he's talking about, but I, I assume that it was a reference to some joke that he made earlier. Huh? Well, we have to believe everything the doctor says. That's why churches shut down during COVID, because they believed everything doctors said. Yeah. You don't think that there was science and data to back that up? Are you kidding me? H has this guy never met anybody who actually had COVID before? Does he not re does he not believe that it's even a real thing? What is going on here? And now you don't hear anything about that nonsense. Now it's all gone. It'll be back during midterms. Don't worry. It'll be back. No, it's not gone. It's not gone. Kenneth Copeland said the same thing. It's gone. It's not. People have gotten used to going to church online. But COVID is gone. Yeah. And it's not coming back. And I'll tell you what, its little brother's not going to do anything either. <laughs> that thing's over for good. It's absolutely grotesque that televangelists and mega church pastors are going around saying things like this because it's genuinely dangerous, genuinely putting people's lives at risk by saying things like this. They didn't take it seriously then. Why would I think they'd take it seriously now? Dude has been ridiculous since day one and he still is. Bipolar is genetic. How can someone cure you of your genes? They don't believe that it's genetic. They don't believe that it exists at all. That's the thing. You you think you're arguing with a rational actor here. You're not. The dude is completely outside of reality here. He isn't accepting that anything is real. You know, when we walk into a situation, when we walk into the world, we take three basic assumptions for granted. We live in a shared reality. We can test things and consistently trust 
that those tests will um god i'm trying to think of the three basic assumptions now about solipsism uh, do you guys remember what they are we can run tests and they will reliably turn out to be the same no matter what well there's a third basic assumption i don't remember what it is i'll insert it later there are three basic assumptions greg Locke is not accepting some of those assumptions he's not taking the assumption that we it's like it's like we don't even live in a shared reality together at this point greg Locke is outside of everything that we know and understand seriously the dude is unhinged i don't even know what to do with all this Thank you guys for coming and giving this a listen, and I will talk to you next week. If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues, Issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.